we're going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariana King, Marketing Coordinator at Meetup. And today we're learning some of the secrets of Southern cooking from special guest Rosie Meeks. Juneteenth commemorates the date that the last slaves in Galveston, Texas, were informed of their emancipation. The holiday was originally celebrated with new clothes, family gathering, and good food. Keeping with these traditions, Rosie will walk us through the steps for preparing spicy fried catfish and collard greens to help you get ready for a Juneteenth celebration of your own. Before we get started, we're going to go over the guidelines and the agenda. This event will be recorded, but don't worry, you will not appear in the video and your audio will be muted, so you'll only hear the panelists. The chat for this event is on. If you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A section and Rosie will have an opportunity to answer them at the end of her demo. We have closed captioning available on the bottom of your screen. You will see the live transcription icon and you can select your preferences there. And to meet our presenter for today, Rosie Mays is the creator of the blog and YouTube channel, I Heart Recipes, and cookbook, I Heart Soul Food, and owner of Rosie Mays Seasonings. She grew up in the kitchen alongside her mother and aunts, learning to cook the Southern and soul food favorites of her Louisiana-based family. She launched her blog and YouTube channel back in 2009 when she was working full-time as a certified nursing assistant. But I Heart Recipes became so successful that in 2014, she took a leap of faith quit her nursing job and started blogging full time. Rosie finds recipe inspiration everywhere and anywhere, often from her devoted audience. When, it's not in the, when she's not in the kitchen, she loves spending time with her family. She lives in Seattle. You can find her online at www.iheartrecipes.com. You can also find her seasonings at rosiemayseasonings.com. And I'm going to turn over the stage to her. Rosie, so excited to be learning from you today. Hello, 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 everyone. Can you hear me? Hey, everybody. So I want to make sure I am done. Okay. So I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. Hey, okay, you can hear me. So I am Rosie Mays. And I am going to show you how I make my collard greens. I might show you guys a different little spin today because I'm all about soul food with a different spin. I am going to start off by telling you about my seasonings that I will be using today. So it is not Rosie Mays, it's actually Rosa Mays Seasonings. You can find my seasonings on rosamayseasonings.com. And yeah, we're gonna get started with the collard greens, okay? So the first thing you're going to need is some collard greens. I actually got some started off camera, but I am going to show you what you need. So you can use the store-bought uh, bundles if you want, but if you wanna make it quick and easy like I'm going to be doing today in this video, you can buy the bag greens, okay? So right here, I have my collard greens in a bag. These are pre-washed and ready to go. Gonna set those to the side. To be flavoring up the greens today, honestly, if you don't want to use the bacon, which I will be using, but I'm going to be using some bacon. But if you don't want to use meat, you can just use a rosemary seasoning. And all or most of the ingredients that I will be using today are actually all in this jar. So my green seasoning makes it super easy. So I'm just going to make sure I'm not missing out on any questions thus far. Okay. So we're gonna start off with some bacon. You can use bacon ends or you can use regular store-bought bacon, which is what I'm using. I have my hickory thick cut bacon. And I'm just going to use a couple of slices. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna make a smaller portion than what my recipe calls for. And what I did off camera just now is I just cut the slices in half. So. You can use, if you don't eat pork, you can actually use turkey. You can use turkey bacon. You can use smoked turkey. And again, if you don't want to add any meat in your greens at all, and you have my green seasoning, you don't have to because all the flavor is in there. So I am going to turn my heat to medium. And my hands are sticky, so I'm going to wash them. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to actually render all the fat from that bacon in this pan here. And while that is going, let me just tell you more about the green seasoning. So for today, we're going to be adding uh, bell pepper, smoke flavor, which is coming from our, see, thank you, see the smoke flavor that's coming from our bacon. Like I mentioned, it's already in here. So I have hickory smoke in here, this coarse sea salt, a little bit of sugar just to balance everything out because you know when you make collard greens or any type of greens, it's a little bitter. So the sugar helps balance it out. It does not make your greens sweet. Also in here, there's onion, garlic, black pepper, jalapeno pepper. The jalapeno pepper isn't so hot to the fact that it makes it spicy. It just adds a nice kick. There's red bell pepper, apple cider vinegar. And I already mentioned that there is hickory smoke in here, okay? So we're just gonna wait for this bacon to heat on up. And while we're doing that, I'm going to grab my greens. Now, even though I told you these are washed and ready to go, I still like to give them a nice rinse. So I'm gonna walk over to my sink here and I am going to give them a nice rinse. Just under cool water. If you're using the bunches, you're gonna to have to do more than a rinse. If I use a bunch, instead of doing the rinse, I actually just slice up my greens, or actually I put the greens in the pot first, and then I put them in the sink and I let them soak for about an hour. I add a little salt and I also add I'm gonna make sure you guys can see everything. So I'm gonna move this camera back and I'm also going to put it down. Now y'all gonna have to excuse me cause I'm super short. So in my mind, you guys can see everything, but y'all probably looking at the camera like, I can't see anything, but now you can see it, I can see it. So we're just gonna render the fat from the bacon. And remember, if you don't eat pork, you can use uh, turkey bacon. You can use turkey bacon. However, turkey bacon does not have as much fat as uh, the pork bacon. So you're gonna have to add just a little bit of vegetable oil to get the turkey bacon going and get all the flavor out of there, okay? So let's just cook this. Let me get this green hot off of here. And since I'm using it in here now, I can't use it in the other pot. So be careful because whenever I do this or fry anything, I am always popping myself, okay? So making sure. So while the bacon is frying, I'm actually gonna put this aside because we don't need any more bacon and I need to free up the space. While this is going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some more ingredients. I'm actually gonna show you the ingredients because I'm going to show you how magical my rosemary seasoning is. So like I said, in the rosemary seasoning, we have onion, bell pepper, jalapeno, fresh jalapeno. Here, all the ingredients here are fresh, but we're gonna keep it easy today, y'all. The bacon's gonna have a lot of time to cook, so you don't have to worry about cooking this like you would for breakfast. You just want the fat to go. So I'm just gonna add some onion just for the sake of it, y'all. Again, if you have the rosemary seasoning, you don't have to add the onion. Get that going. I also have red bell pepper. Again, this is in my rosemary seasoning. So if you have that, you don't have to add that in here either. And now, 
we are going to start adding in. I'm looking around to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I'm going to start adding in some of the collard greens. It's actually like I fry the collard greens, just like I would like fried cabbage if you're familiar with that. If you're not, I have a recipe in my cookbook, I Heart Soul Food for fried cabbage. I'm just going to lightly fry this first. And of course, you can't add all of it at once. But what you're going to do is you're just going to let it shrink on down. And then once it does, you can add more, OK? So the next step you're going to do is add in water or vegetable broth or chicken broth. And that's if you don't have the rosemary green seasoning. So I'm going to use water today. And we are just going to let this cook. Give everything a nice stir. And now you're going to start adding in your seasonings, okay? So the seasons for this will be the vinegar, the salt. I usually use seasoning salt, or I used to use seasoning salt before my uh, green seasoning. Uh, you'll need some onion powder as well as garlic powder. But you know what? I don't want to spend all my time getting all the seasoning, all this stuff. So I'm just going to add in my rosemary seasonings. And it really depends on how much greens you're making for how much you're going to be using. So you can see the onion, you can see the bell pepper, the garlic, all that's all in there. So no need to mix that up today. All right. So now we're just gonna let this cook. So I have it on high, I'm gonna reduce it to medium high. You could put a lid on if you want, I usually don't. I'm not gonna lie, I usually don't. And we're just going to actually let this cook in the back, okay? So let's put this to the back. Y'all, I'm over here burning my hands trying to prove a point to y'all that, you know, that I got this, but I just burnt my hand, but we're gonna act like it didn't happen. So anyway, when your greens are done, this is what I'm gonna have to like show y'all. I'm gonna cook this some more. So you're gonna cook the greens until they get nice and dark, just like this. You see how dark that is? You want it a dark green. If they're still lime green, baby, they are not done. But you'll have the bacon and if you don't like it, this big or it fell. I'm talking about this big, y'all can't even see it. If you don't like the bacon this big, you can always cut it in smaller pieces. But y'all, to be completely honest with you, greens is super easy to make. The hardest part about making greens is, in my opinion, is the cleaning. But if you buy it in the bag, just like I did, you don't have to do all that. So. That is how to make collard greens. Gonna have to set this to the side. And now I'm going to show you guys how to make catfish. Okay, so what I'm going to do is bring my catfish over here. And I am gonna bring y'all over here and I'm gonna actually move the camera down just a little bit so you can see, okay. So in here I have my catfish fillets. And to make it nice and spicy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add hot sauce all over it. Now I know that sounds weird, right? But it works, just trust me. The hot sauce is actually also going to help the breading stick on the fish. Now, if you are not a familiar, not familiar, but if you're not a fan of spicy food and you don't want your catfish spicy, you don't have to worry about it. Instead, I feel so silly, but instead of getting hot sauce, you can use mustard. 
If you don't like the taste of mustard, no worries. You actually can't taste the mustard once you start frying it, but the mustard helps the breading stick on the seafood, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make the breading. And I am going to grab the first thing that I see to coat it. And I usually use Ziploc bags, y'all. Give me one second. Okay, so I have this platter here. This is what we're going to use for our breading. In the pack, in the dish there, I am going to start adding in some all-purpose flour. Excuse my beer opener. So all-purpose flour. And along with the all-purpose flour, we're going to use some yellow cornmeal. I use more cornmeal than flour. So before I do another step, what I'm going to do over here, I have my pan. I'm going to start heating up our oil. That's going to take a while. We'll just pour on in until the ancestors tell us to stop. Just like that. I'm using corn oil. That is my choice. Vegetable oil. And I'm just going to warm it all up. Okay, so in here we have the cornmeal and the flour. And to season it on up, I'm going to use my Rosemary seasoning salt. Again, you can get this from rosemayseasonings.com. This is over 14 ounces. It's a nice big old jar. And in here is sea, sorry, sea salt. I was about to say seasoning salt. Sugar, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, celery seed, thyme, and black pepper. So unlike a lot of seasoning salts, you don't have to worry about adding, you know, pepper. It's already in there. Just gonna use my hands and get all crunchy with it. And this is usually how I make my fish, but I also like lemon pepper and Rosemary Seasons has lemon pepper coming in the next two weeks or so. So we have it all mixed up. I'm gonna set this to the side. And in here we have our fish. We just wanna make sure that the fish is nicely coated with that hot sauce, y'all. And if you want it really, really hot, you can also sprinkle some cayenne pepper on your fish fillets. Okay. So, I'm going to take this fillet here and we're going to place it in here and get it nice and coated. Just like so. And you don't have to use uh, the fillets like I'm using. You can also use the fish, catfish nuggets. They are less expensive. And they're usually found in the freezer aisle, but some butchers sell it as well. All right. See how nice and coated that is? Now I'm going to go clean this mess off my hands, which really is pointless because I have to stick my hands right back in, but I just don't like the way it feels under my nails. So while this is going on, I'm gonna check the heat to our oil. And what I do to see if it's hot enough, I usually just get it like a little pinch of my flour and I sprinkle it in. If it doesn't bubble, it ain't ready to go. 
I do the same thing when it comes to frying chicken. I always just take a pinch, put in the flour. If it doesn't sizzle, it's not good to go. So I'm just gonna check on the greens and stuff while our oil's heating up. And that's good. I guess what I can do, just move this fillet to the side and just bread another one. And you want to make sure that it's nicely breaded. Don't just, you know, roll it one time and think you're good to go. Otherwise, that little layer that you do use will fry right on off. So let's do another little flour test. Not quite, but we are almost there. At this time, I'm going to bring you guys back on over. I'm going to point you down so that you can see the pan. And I'm starting to see it pop. All right. Let's try one more time. I think we're good to go. Ready? It could have been hotter, but it is a-okay. We're just gonna let these babies fry. And I'm deep frying, as you can see, I have more oil than usual. I like to deep fry my fish instead of just using a little bit. I'm just gonna let that fry. And the heat is on medium high. The fish will start to kind of like float once it's time to turn or flip it, kind of like this edge over here. Let's just let that fry. And I like to use yellow cornmeal, but if you have white cornmeal on hand, you can do that. Again, we use our rosemary seasoning salt. But if you don't have the seasoned salt, you're going to season it with another, you know, your favorite seasoning salt, which honestly should be this one. But hey, if it's not, it's okay. You just don't know yet. But you can use salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. But it's best to have the rosemary seasoning salt because everything is well measured out in there. So while you're making your fish, you should probably check on your greens like I'm doing. You can multitask, don't be scared. Unless you're brand new, then you should be scared. Don't try to multitask, we'll just probably burn the house down. And our goal for the fish is to fry it until it is nice and golden brown. So it's almost ready to flip, but not quite. And if you are a fan of other greens, such as cabbage, uh, let's see, turnip, mustard, and all that other good stuff, you can use a green seasoning for that as well. It is, my green seasoning is not just for collard greens. You can also use it on broccoli, asparagus, um, all of it, okay? Green beans, whatever you wanna add it on or cook your favorite green veggies, you can do that. So I'm gonna step away. We 
All right, y'all. I don't feel like it's ready to flip yet. Give it a little more time. A little too soft. Most of the time when I make my fried fish, I actually use my deep fryer. But since we're not making a whole lot today, I don't want to waste that much oil. If you flip the fish too early, the fish will break and you don't want that. So just try to be patient. All right. So resume seasonings is also working on a fish fry that will be good and ready to go. And all you have to do is open up the package and culture fish. So we are always, yeah, working on something else to make soul food cooking a lot easier. So other than us having the, we have um, our sea, sorry, our seasoning salt. We actually have a seafood seasoning coming as well. Uh, we have an oxtail seasoning coming as well as a poultry seasoning and a pork seasoning. And the oxtail seasoning, poultry seasoning, and the pork seasoning will also have salt-free versions. And we're also working on the salt-free version of our green seasoning because a lot of people have been requesting that. So if you are on a sodium restricted diet, we still have some good things for you. So food is always associated with a high sodium. And Rosemary Seasons is working to help work against that. So instead of using that, I'm going to use my other little thingy here. Turn it. I really don't want it to break. There we go. Or I thought there we went. Okay, there we go. I'm doing like this so I don't splash myself. As mentioned in the video, I always do. And as I'm saying, I don't want to splash myself. I just did. Got me right in my chinny chin chin. All right. So believe it or not, this is, we're pretty much like almost done, y'all. It does not take a long time to make catfish. I'm gonna actually move the greens back here out of the way. You see how nice and golden brown it is, y'all, on this side? I'm still gonna flip it back to this side so that it can get more cooked. I won't say more brown because that's actually the perfect color, but I wanna cook it more. Unless it's sushi, I don't do raw fish. So yeah, gotta make sure it's done. All right. So, as mentioned, I'm very short and I don't want to make any really bad mistakes. I'm going to move y'all over here so I can be all up in your face while this is cooking. So, other than catfish, if you like swai, if you like tilapia, that works as well. Um, I have tried this with salmon, it actually came out really good. But you don't have to just use catfish, just FYI. All right, I'm gonna pull you back over here. I'm gonna pull you or push it in.
All right, that's the color I am looking for. Minus that little piece right there. If your fish is thinner, you don't have to cook it as long. Um, if you use the catfish nuggets, they're definitely smaller, so it won't take as long as the beef fillets. These are on the thicker side. All right. And also, since I'm deep frying it and it's like all the way in the oil, it's cooking a lot faster than it would if I just did it in a more shallow pan, y'all. All right. So I turned my heat off because for the sake of the video, I don't need to make all four. I'm actually going to keep that one in the middle for a while. Well, hello, hello. Okay. So I'm gonna, I was gonna toss that, but I still need it. Move this fish out of the way. I can cook it later. Got both of these. And you know what it's time to do? It's time to plate everything. So I'm greedy. Okay. I'm greedy. So I got my big old plate here. And the first thing I'm going to plate will be my greens. Now I'm about to get popped because some of the green juice went into the fish oil and I'm prepared to get popped. You hear it? If you like your bacon to be crispier for your greens, just cook it longer at the beginning. For presentation purposes, I'm going to add some uh, bell pepper on top of my greens, but it's not necessary just to add some color. I'm going to move this plate over here. I'm going to move that out of the way because I'm just waiting to get popped. You have your spicy catfish and your greens. So again, we use the rosemary seasoning salt for the catfish, and we use the rosemary green seasoning for the greens. I also have a yam seasoning if you like candy yams, and we have a barbecue rub, and within the next couple of weeks, we will have that oxtail seasoning, pork seasoning, and poultry seasoning. Oh, and peach cobbler. I have peach cobbler seasoning too, I almost forgot. But that's this, and I, and ready for whatever questions you may have. Thank you so much for that demo, Rosie. Everything looked so good. I'm just like, um, should I make this tonight? <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. my question. Should I make it tonight? <laughs> yeah. So our first viewer question is anonymous. Can your green seasoning be used for kale or spinach? Yes. I'm trying to be proper. I have a mouthful of him. I'm greedy. I told you all that. But greens, any greens, so kale, spinach, uh, rainbow char, any of it. You can use it. Cabbage, any type of cabbage, green beans. You want to sprinkle it in some peas, you can do that too. Uh, Brussels sprouts, you're good to go. Oh, fantastic. Super versatile. Absolutely. Eddie asked, 
how many pieces of bacon in the collard greens? Today, I added four. But if you want the exact measurements, you can find it the recipe on my blog, iheartrecipes.com. You could just look up uh, collard greens and it will pop up and you'll see the exact amount. I usually go by pounds. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Katrina asked, are you using a regular pot or a big frying pan? It looked like you had both. So for my greens, I used the actual saucepan on camera, but I use a regular pot usually. Uh, this with the fish in it, it's just a regular frying pan. Regular frying pan. Most of the time I like to use my cast iron pan, but I was in a rush today and um, I actually have some nice cast iron deep dish pans that could be used on the stove top and in the oven on rosemary seasoning. So we have pans there as well. Oh, that's super exciting. I just learned how to use a cast iron. For the longest, I was like, these don't work. I, I found out that you're not supposed to wash them like a dish. Yes, you are not supposed to like, don't ever emerge it in water. So the cool thing about our cast iron is it is already stick free in season when it comes and it's enamel coated. So you don't have to worry about seasoning it after every use and everything, but just don't put it in the water. <laughs> See, don't, you don't have to learn the hard way. Do not put your cast iron in the water. Don't want it to rust. D asked, could you use an air fryer? For the catfish? I'm assuming so. So, yeah, I would think she's talking about that. You can't do with greens. You can definitely use an air fryer. And Rosa Mae Sleeving has an air fryer that will be available pretty soon. So Ooh. if you're going to make the catfish, you can just coat it like I did on camera. And then you will spray it with like an oil spritzer and then put it in your air fryer. So, yes, you can use it. Okay, awesome. Brenda asked, what temperature should the oil be at? For the catfish, I had it at about 375. All right. Leslie asked, what if I wanted to keep the greens vegetarian? Is there a substitute for the bacon that would give that same flavor? Absolutely, Leslie. So if you want to use, um, you want to keep it vegetarian, just use the rosemary seasonings. You're still going to have the hickory smoke flavor because it's in here already. And then um, I use water, but since it's vegetarian, if you're gonna wanna add a little more flavor, you can use vegetable broth. So that will kick your greens up a notch if you're gonna do it vegetarian style. Oh, perfect. Onita asked, can you recite the seasonings for the catfish? The catfish, right off the back of my head. So are you asking for the exact recipes or what I just did in the video? I'm not, let's go with the recipe you just showed us today. Okay, so in the video, I just added flour. I've been doing it for so long, I don't measure it, but I do one part flour, one part, and it's all purpose flour, one part um, yellow cornmeal, and then I use my seasoning salt. And it really depends on how much fish that you're going to be using. I just did four fillets and that was a little under two pounds. So I eyed everything, but it was about maybe two teaspoons of my seasoning salt and about a cup each maybe two third cup each of the flour and yellow. Oh, I about to say yellow all-purpose seasoning. Yellow cornmeal. <laughs> all right. Lee from the UK asked, oh, they don't have catfish. And he asked, what's a good alternative? Uh, let's see. So spy tilapia. I don't like using cod for this recipe, but it, it can be used. I've seen plenty of people use it. I just don't like the texture, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, as mentioned, I also tried it with salmon before. Salmon is going to be a little more dry if you fry. Just make sure that you have, um, I think coho works really good with this recipe, but you don't need catfish. Any fish that you like to fry, you can use it with this recipe. Lots of great options. Now, the catfish has like some thickness to it. Could you use it with something like whiting that's way way thinner would the breading be too much nope you can use it for any fish it's just going to take a little less time if it's thinner to cook that's going to be the only difference in the course depending on the okay. fish use texture okay okay and oh i like this question brenda asked for suggestions for a great dessert to go with this i'm going to go with peach cobbler because that's my favorite and uh, so I would make maybe a deep dish peach cobbler. And as I mentioned, we're going to have a peach cobbler seasoning. All you'll need when that season comes out is your peaches. You can use canned peaches or fresh, butter and crust. And then all the seasons, the sugar, 
everything else that I use that people they really like my peach cobbler recipe it's all going to be in one package so peach cobbler will always be a great dessert for fish greens and if you don't want just fish and greens which most people aren't just going to have this have some macaroni and cheese cornbread and you're set perfect Letitia said first that this looks amazing couldn't agree more thank you Letitia also can the fish be cooked in the oven it can so if you're going to make it in the oven, I would do it the same way that I said the air fryer. The only difference is instead of laying it on a flat surface, since it's in the oven. Um, so let me just walk you through it. So you're going to bread it. And then you're going to get like a cooking baking rack, place it into your baking dish and place the fish on top of the baking rack, but you don't want it to get soggy on the bottom. And if you don't put it on a rack, it's just going to, it's going to get soggy on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get an oil spritzer spray the fish and then place it in the oven. Just make sure you have a rack so it can be nice and crispy on top and bottom. Oh, that's good. So it's kind of like the same thing that the air fryer does. Yeah, like, but the air fryer already has a rack and stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be the same. And Allison asked for the greens, how much water do you put in initially? And where do you find bacon ends? Cause she couldn't get any. Bacon in, so with the water, it really depends on how much you're making. Again, you don't have to use water. You can use chicken broth, you can use vegetable broth. Um, depending on how much you make, I think for this, because I eyed it, I've been cooking so long, I eye everything, but I used about three cups of water. And that was for my, how many pounds of greens was that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I eye everything. So unless I'm writing it down, everything's eyed. But um, yeah, go to my blog, iHeartRecipes.com. I have the exact measurements there for how much to make or how much liquid to use. And what was the other part of that question? Where do you find bacon ends? Bacon ends can be found at your local butcher if you can't find them in your store. But if you're having a hard time finding them at those places, just buy some fatty, cheap bacon. Any fatty piece of bacon is going to give you enough fat to flavor your, your greens. Okay, awesome. Charlie asks, can we purchase the seasonings in Canada? You can. We are internet. We do ship internationally. Um, try tomorrow, though, because I have to make sure and go to our website that it is enabled. But um, yeah, we are supposed to be doing international shipping as of now. All right. Great. Kathy asks, can you use beef bacon? Absolutely. You can use any bacon, duck bacon, because I know a lot of people use that now. Um, any bacon that you want to use, just make sure that you have enough fat. Like I was saying with um, turkey bacon, you're not going to get really any fat. So just add a couple tablespoons to the turkey bacon while you're frying it to at least get the oil, not the oil, but the flavor into that oil while you're cooking. Yeah. T is trying to get a whole meal. She asked if you have a recipe or seasoning for macaroni and cheese. I don't have a seasoning for macaroni and cheese, but you can definitely use my seasoning salt. That is an all-purpose seasoning. Um, she wanted a whole meal. Did she say anything else that she wanted? Or was it just, just wanted the no, mac and cheese? No, she's trying to round out our catfish and collard greens with mac and okay. cheese. Okay. So yeah, get, get the seasoning salt. You can use the seasoning salt on anything, whether it be uh, meat, pasta, salads. The seasoning salt is all-purpose. So yeah, you need this. Go ahead and get that. You need, I mean, everybody needs a seasoning salt. And I feel like, you know, rose and maize. I, it's it's the best. Best. It really is the best because once you use this, you don't have to add like anything else. It has the pepper, it has the garlic, the onion, thyme. It's all in here. Most seasoning salts is just salt, paprika, and a whole bunch of uh, preservatives and stuff that we cannot pronounce. But, you know, it says, it says it right here, you know, see, salt. Sugar, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, celery, seed, ground thyme, and black pepper. You can read it. You had so. when you said thyme. Uh, yes. I love thyme. It's so good and not enough people use it. But they want to once they try this, that it's going to be a game changer. I'm telling you, like, yes. And when you use this, like, you can use it overnight, like, to season your meats and everything, but it tastes so good, like, there aren't any words. I, I made this up just playing around in my kitchen because I ran out of my previous favorite seasoning salt and I just started mixing stuff up. And after that, I was like, nah, I, I got to put this out there for everybody. Everybody needs this. So yeah, it's, it is the best. Y'all got to try it. That is super exciting. Somebody asked, what does catfish taste like compared to other fish? 
You know what? That's a really good question because catfish is, and salmon is really my favorite. So the other fish to me, if you ask me, I'm going to be biased. And I don't think you want my answer, but it tastes bomb. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. It tastes good. Compared to other fish, it tastes nothing like salmon. It's not wild. It tastes it kind of tastes like a mix between like tilapia and cod almost like it has a little bit like of a smoother flavor than tilapia it's more fatty though it's definitely yeah. more fatty it's more moist i'm not a fan of tilapia uh anymore i used to be uh but am i a fan of tilapia? i like it on a sandwich but i don't like it by itself catfish i can have one is a catfish burger i can have catfish nuggets yeah, but to answer your question, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be good to answer that because if you ask me that, I'm just gonna be like, it's everything else is nasty compared to catfish, in my opinion. Catfish and salmon is my stuff, so yeah. The consensus is that catfish is definitely worth a try if you can get your hands on it. And you have, and um, like Rosie mentioned earlier, the nuggets are a really good way to test them out because you don't have to commit to a lot. So you could go yeah. to the fish counter and get like a quarter pound. So just try it. And make sure it's filleted. You don't want no bones in your stuff. I have a story about that, but I don't have all day to, you know, share it, but make sure it's filleted. I got oil all over my stuff, but yeah. Anna asked, can the leftover juice from the collard greens be used to make soup? It can. So that is, the leftover juice is called pot liquor. And growing up, what we did is some people used to put it like in baby's bottles because all like the juices from the collards and the meat and peppers, it's all in there. It's just a broth. But, um... It can definitely be used as a soup, or you can just store it by itself and just dip your cornbread in it. So hot liquor and cornbread. Some restaurants actually serve that. Wow. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that, that sounds super exciting. Hot liquor, yeah. Thank you all for joining us. That was our last question of the evening. I want to send a big thank you to Rosie for teaching us how to make these delicious meals uh -huh. and dropping all those gems along the way. We all really appreciate it. Before we go, I'd like to share two slides with you. For others, for others learning how to cook and share recipe, you can share recipes on Meetup and save 50% with your first subscription, go to meetupsavings.com. Also, we launched our podcast, Keep Connected with Meetup CEO earlier this year. Please take a moment to take out your phones right now and scan the QR code to give it a listen. So if you have a QR code reader on your phone, you can hold it right up to the screen snap a picture and it'll take you straight to the podcast. So I'll give you a moment to test that out before I pull down the slide. As a reminder, if you'd like to view a recap of this event on our Community Matters blog, it's at meetup.com forward slash blog. Thank you for joining us again and stay safe everyone.